Welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Kingstown. Well, I kept calling this Grenada. This is not Grenada. Kingstown. Same Kingstown. Thing. Everybody's still got their mask on. They're requiring it. And you have to take a uh, tour to get off at the island. Just can't get off and walk around. Darn it. Since we needed a tour to get off at the island, Mark, Elisa, and I opted for the Best of St. Vincent tour. This is our tour group. Everybody say hello, tour group. Hello, tour group. Okay. <laughs> Are you the cruise director? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll fill in today. <laughs> and that is when I will know if you guys are paying attention or not, because the rum is going to... Now that I mentioned the rum, the lovely black storage facility. Isn't it lovely? There is something inside of it that begins with M. No, it is not money, it is not milk. It is molasses, which is used to make the 84.5% alcohol I just told you about. When you drink it, you get happy, then the sun sets. Bear in mind that there might be a pop quiz this afternoon, so please pay attention because there might be a pop quiz. The financial complex or the administrative center. On the lower floor is the government's treasury. On the top floor is the prime minister's office. So the famous saying is that the Prime Minister sits on top of everybody's money. So St. Vincent and the Great, the first Europeans to arrive on the island were not the British. The first Europeans to set foot on the island were the French. But prior to the arrival of the French, we had a group of nomadic people living here who were called the Sibonese tribe, who were followed by the Arawak tribe, who were followed by the Kalinago tribe, who were later followed by some enslaved Africans. And these enslaved Africans made life for the British a living hell. Staying on to your right, I present to you the St. George's Cathedral, the Church of England. Inside of the St. George's Cathedral, there's a stained glass in which Queen Victoria commissioned for her grandson. She wanted a white angel, she got the color red, it was gifted to St. Vincent. And adjacent to the St. George's Cathedral, we have the St. Mary's Roman Catholic Cathedral. The first structure of the Catholic Church was built, it was a wooden structure in 1823, but the current structure we are looking at was built in 1909. So, after the, after the natives, after the, the arrival of the Africans, the Africans created a new tribe with the, with the, with the Kalinagos who are living here. They were called the Black Caribs, which was a mixture of the Caribs and those Africans who survived the ship. I want you guys to repeat after me. Puha. Puha. Coco. Puha Coco. Ah, who have cocoa do? Hafo, look for rain. Look for him. Now let me hear you say it by yourself. Let me hear you say it by yourself. So let me say it and then you guys say it by yourself. Who have cocoa do? Have to look for rain. <laughs> when you say it, you notice I started slow and I gradually carried up the pace, right? Yeah. So, who have cocoa do have to look for rain? It means before you judge others, judge yourself. We are familiar with the expression, if you live in a glass house, don't trust stones. That is the exact meaning of who have cocoa do have to look for rain. Our first stop on the tour was Fort Charlotte, where Shaq Hill explained the paintings that now decorate the fort and the history of the island. Which is in Grenada. So we're not seen from St. Vincent straight down to Grenada. You guys going to Grenada? Yeah, tomorrow. I think. It's still a little hard. It depends. It depends. It depends on. So remember on the bus, I told you the history. So now we're seeing the history of the island in the form of paintings. So I'm gonna start at the very beginning. Now in 1675, a Dutch slave ship that was destined for Barbados, which is 100 miles west of us, sank off the coast of Beckwith. 
those Africans who managed to survive came ashore, mixed and mingled, and created a new tribe called the Black Carib or the Garifuna people. And as I mentioned on the bus, these were the people who made life for the British and live in hell. So we now had the pure Caribs or the yellow Caribs, and we had the black Caribs, which was a mixture of the Africans and the, and, and the, and the Caribs. So the black Caribs occupied one side of the island and the, yellow, and the yellow Caribs occupied one side of the island. They exchanged them with the French for guns and ammunition which were used to torment, which were used to torment the, 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 the British because the native people were accustomed to their traditional weapons which were bows and arrows. So they exchanged them with the French. When the British set foot on the island, the natives were womanless. The British were taking their women. And no one likes to share their spouses, right? Anybody likes to, anybody likes to share their spouse? I'm looking. You looking? No, I'm looking if there's anyone here. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure no one likes to share their spouses. So that was the case with the British, with the, with the natives. The natives went to a village on the leeward side of the island called Cumberland, and sometime before, before the British set foot on the island, they were attacked. It got to a point where the British, set, the British were like, where are the attacks coming from? They couldn't tell where the attacks were coming from. Sometime, the natives will literally stand up in between the trees, they will literally stand up in between the trees, and when the British passed, their arrows were pelted at them. And after they did this, they would have already run. This we are seeing the burning of a French plantation, Madame Lacroix. They felt that they were not being treated fairly, so they burned her plantation in revolt. Now I'm going to show you the next painting is the showing us the killing of Joseph Chatelier, who was the Carib chief at the time. He was killed on the 14th of March, 1795, by Major Lee Alexander of the British Army. So he was killed then. Even though he was killed, the native people continued to fight. They continued to fight, but they eventually surrendered. And when they surrendered, the British captured 5,000 of the native people. Captured 5,000 of the native people, placed them into their canoes, exiled them to the two islands I mentioned that I showed you guys, Baliso and Batawa. And out of the 5,000 who went to those islands, there were only 2,200 remaining. So Sandy Bay is where you will find the native, the pure, pure Caribs, and Greg's is where you will find the, the descendants of the black Caribs. So we are currently in an area where you may find a few descendants of the original people. Can you see? It doesn't say made in England. So how do we know these are the original cannons? So how do we know? The serial number. No. <laughs> so how do we know? Because I'm hiding the marks. I was hiding the marks. So we have the royal crest of King George III. The arrowhead that, that indicates the British artillery. So when you look at a cannon from England, you will see the, the arrows, which means the Ministry of Defense. Back then, it was called the Ministry of War. Had some great views from the fort. Take this moment to apologize for some of the camera work. Uh, under the circumstances, I did the best I could. Here goes. Here goes. <coughs> Come, 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 come one and all, out in the moonlight, come and have a ball. Beat the drum, let the flute man blow, strike up the music and join in the below. Moonlight, poor man lantern, moonlight, show me your motion. People come from far and near, sounds of music in the air. Come and shake your motion, dance in the moonlight till early. Come and shake your motion, dance in the moonlight till early. Come and shake your motion, dance in the moonlight till early.
Now, on a scale from one to five, how do you rate the singing? One being good and five being horrible, how do you rate the singing? <laughs> Our next stop on the tour was the Botanical Gardens. What sort of protection am I talking about? Rubber tree. Yes, but what kind of rubber? Yes, the rubber tree. But what sort of protection am I talking about? I don't know what I know. Huh? I'm not sure I want to know. You don't show, you don't show, you don't show you want to know? So this is the ornamental rubber tree. So this is the rubber tree, the ornamental one. And as we go up, we're going to meet two additional rubber trees. One is which is used for your protection. That is where your condoms and where your rubber sole of your shoes comes from. So if she decided she did not want to marry you, she had two ways of exiting the you see. Make room, make room, Shaquille. I have made room. See what it is. Anybody would like to sample? No. Well, this isn't dry enough because I couldn't find any. When this dry, it turns brown mm -hmm. and it has such a wonderful smell. It is so wonderful that when you smell it, you want to eat it. Now, if you decide you're going to taste this, you cannot taste too much. If you do, you will not die. So how, so how do I put this? How do I put this? If you eat it, you will not die. You will find yourself, you will find yourself inside of the toilet. So only use it if you are constipated. It is a laxative. It's called the golden snower. Breadfruit tree, a sucker from it, from uh, one that Captain Bly brought in the 1700s. That's pretty cool. Well, after showing us the gardens, Shaquille took us and showed us the crater, uh, the volcano that uh, formed St. Vincent's, and then took us over to the uh, boat harbor where we saw some lovely yachts and had our departing rum drink. He then took us back to the ship like to thank uh, Shaquille and Maxwell for a great tour. We had fun and learned a lot about the island.